Okay, so welcome to something that I used to do. <laughs> um, I don't have a name for this, probably never will. Uh, my commute. Here's my name, my commute. Um, rainy and snowy this morning. Um, have you joined me for the last, uh, it's probably going to be 30 minutes because of how slowly I have to go through the snow from here in the Bronx. Uh, now from here it's usually about 25 minutes, but maybe a little bit longer because of, uh, see, I can't run down this hill like that. There are also people. Out here, kind of slowly. Uh, thought this was somewhat of an appropriate day to start uh, my return to talking while I run. Uh, got this little knee cam attached to my shirt here. And at least you can hear me. I don't know what it's going to look like. We get some taste of what it's like to run to work every day and back again. It's days like these that I actually live for. You know, because it's fun to be out in this. If you treat it like it's fun instead of like a, a torture. Yeah, as kids we used to go out and play in the snow, didn't we? So, part of my commute is to play in the snow a little bit. Uh, and that's what I'm about to do. I do want to talk about uh, teaching and learning just because that's what I'm all about. But, uh, sorry to introduce a little bit later. Years ago I did this on my bike. I did it somewhat running. Um, and, uh, at Educon recently, Chad Sampson said, why don't you start doing that again? I thought, is it crazy? But, uh, I guess I'm crazy too. Thanks, Chad. Um, you might be the only one watching this. <laughs> but hey, look, that's a nice thing to plant in my head. So, yeah, let me, uh, just, uh, allow myself to be to do that kind of crazy connected um, thinking that uh, as I'm doing this I I somewhere in the back of my head know that anybody might see this at any, any time down in the future the long tail motion um, but that uh, for some reason there are people like me, who might be listening right now, uh, kind of quickly, so having Chad Sampson in my head as I'm composing this is interesting. Now, the Composition Act, uh, I've reflected on this before, but as I'm thinking of restarting these, let me just say that this is as close to free talking as I can get in that. So nobody interrupts me. It's not a dialogue really, except for those folks I carry on in my, carry with me in my head. And, uh, and I allow myself to pop from one thing to another, to follow tangents, to not have a plan. Now, every once in a while, after I do these for some time, I end up having a plan. I end up thinking during the day, when I get to that um, video cast, in this case, uh, this afternoon, there are three things on my mind. I want to make sure I get to all of them. So, there's a vague outline that sometimes begins to grow, um, again, over time. and. Uh, 
And that makes me think about free riding in general. And then April, Peter Elba will be joining us at the uh, New York City Writing Project. And his work is extensive, of course, in uh, lots of different directions. But uh, for me, it often goes back to this notion of trying to get close to what's going on in your head. Um, and, and that's not right. That's wrong. Uh, but it's because sometimes it's almost what's going on in your in your hand. You don't even know in your head that you're thinking these things before you start writing. But that's what it's about. So, free writing. But you know what? It's a practice over time that we're looking for. So that um, you begin to talk to yourself. So there's our connection to Monica Hardy's notion of detox. Detox isn't an assignment that you do. It's a habit that you form over time and that um, you know what? I think it's a becoming your own best audience in some way. <laughs> right? So Talking to yourself begins to make sense. So yeah, maybe that's what I'm doing. Maybe I'm doing detox here. Uh, trying to clarify where my passions are, what I've been noticing. And uh, I uh, do this at a kind of I don't know what to call it. Potentially sensitive time. Because I want to get hired at a school that both appreciates and protects and understands, I guess what it begins with understands, doesn't it? Uh, what it is I do. And so I don't want to kind of throw out ideas on this thing that might get me in trouble. So look at that. I'm already censoring it myself. So you know you gotta you gotta keep Eric Needlestern's notion in mind that if I'm not careful you might get the job you don't want. Um, I think that's true. So how do I go about getting the job that I want? Uh, that's uh, the question. I was uh, recently contacted by a friend of a friend, and as you probably know, that's how things go. That's how jobs happen. You, uh, your friends don't hire you. Friends of friends hire you. Oh, hold on. Got a loose shoestring. Turn up this hill, not good. Idea. Okay, here we go. So what have I been noticing? You know, Monica talks about having young people and she herself reflect on what you're noticing, what dreams you try to make come true, uh, what connections you're making. I uh, just referred to connections there, didn't I? And then what you're doing is awesome. I actually like those four categories quite a lot. They can be 
kind of more naturally structure the way you're thinking and be give you inspiration more than um, limit your thinking. So yeah. What have I been noticing? Here's one thing I've noticed. Uh, Bronx Arena the other day had a conference and there was a substitute teacher and a teacher who's been at Bronx Arena for a couple of years talking about the youth, the young generation and their use of computers. So part of what I've been noticing is London schools. My contribution to that conversation uh, was trying to be positive about the kids. Trying to point out that in fact productivity is up. That whatever we want to worry about their uh, multitasking and the ability to spend a deep long time on any particular subject or thought. Uh, maybe it's just a different way of thinking and we're not so used to it. So I just wanted to thank you Ka Kathy Davidson for that. Uh, but I uh, just wanted to plant that notion for them that uh, maybe it's not a deficiency, maybe it's just different. But uh, when the teacher who's been working with kids on computers for two years now, the entire curriculum is based on, a, on, on computers, and, uh, gave the example, it kind of shut me up, made me just kind of want to listen more. Uh, and she said that students do math one, two, and three in school. They do it quickly, they get the grades, they get the credit, and but they don't really do the learning because they you know use multiple choice guess and uh, they copy and they do whatever they can do to get the grades. And there is a real emphasis in these blended schools especially in the transfer one, it seems to me, um, for getting the grade, getting it done. It's almost as if, I'm sure nobody would say this, but it certainly feels that way. The technocrats who imagine the future like this want to just say, Here's the curriculum. We know how to build the curriculum. You know, you can even help us build it. Let's, uh, let's make this wonderful curriculum for kids. And then let's get out of the way. And, you know, there's some of the rhetoric of that that I understand because I think, I think there is many times when I wish teachers would just sit down beside their students and let the students work. Um, but that only works if the students are working on self-directed, meaningful, challenging uh, material. The, uh, and that's quite a list of adjectives, I know that, but, uh, Anything else becomes cheating, becomes you know, copy and paste. I hear kids saying, take this class or do this project for this class because all you have to do is uh, copy some words onto a paper 